Well, hello my friends, it's Sean Petit. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I am doing a question and answer video. I have started a new series of answering the most common questions that I get on a regular basis to try and help you in your creativity process to ha help you with some tools in your creative tool belt. Today we're talking about um, what I use for my fine line mix mixture. I get this, uh, all these questions are really regular questions. So I'm gonna share my mixture with that, my towels that I use, and then we're gonna talk about paints because I get asked all the time, what type of paint should I be using? So I'm gonna kinda go over the difference of those and um, what is maybe the best beginner paint for you. Um, or maybe even just my own personal likes. So first off, um, let's talk about, I get asked all the time what type of towel I'm using. These are, um, these are a paper towel, they're a shop towel, and I'll just show you the box. Uh, it's um, Scott Shop Towels. It's made for like working in the garage or mechanics or that kind of thing. Um, there's an easy pop-up box you can see here, or they come in a roll like this. Let's see. Let me make sure. See, they come in just a regular roll. I have both in the shop. We use it all the time for um, in the shop and when I'm creating. So that is the towel that I use. They're um, super, super strong. Um, they take a lot of moisture. I can get them wet and reuse them and all those kinds of things. And then I can also, um, I can split them and use them. I can also use them as collage elements because you end up getting, let me see if I have a couple here. Let me see if I have, huh. well, I don't have any examples right this second. Um, but I use them as collage elements as well so that you can repurpose them. I used to use towels, um, regular hand towels, um, but the surface finish of some of the towels um, I did not like. The, this is nice and smooth and um, you know I would rinse them out and stuff like that and then I would worry about the paint going down the drain, that kind of thing. So I was going through a lot of those. So these have worked out very well for me. Um, I can um, I don't have to worry about the paint going down the drain and they're very convenient. I know that um, as far as recycling and that kind of thing, you can't recycle once the paint's on there. Um, but this is just the towel that I've chosen to use. It's, it's um, easy and I can repurpose them in a lot of different ways. So that's the towel that I use. <clears throat> and then for my fine liner, so let me just grab... Um, I use my fine liner a lot when I'm doing some scribbling and different things like that. This is um, a fine tip applicator and this is the the 20 gauge I believe it is. I'm trying to see if it's, it's so, I, I've had it forever. But this is, um, you can do some really cool designs and different scribbles but this, I love using this for my um, scribbling and that kind of thing. It's got a very fine tip and it's got a needle um, in the cap which is very important to use all the time because that's what keeps it from clogging. But you need to make sure that you put this back into the tip so that it does not clog. I have had this for years and I mix this, I mix my mixture probably once a year. That's how long it will last for me. Um, so my mixture is uh, airbrush medium and I have only found golden to have airbrush medium. It's not super cheap, um, but this bottle, I've had this bottle for three years. So it do, it's not like you use a ton of it. And the mixture is, um, there's not a scientific approach to this. It's kind of, you kind of have to just mix a little bit. What does matter is the type of paint that you use. So I typically will use a high flow acrylic in white or black because I'm usually only using it in white or black for dots and scribbles and things like that. 
Um, I choose high, uh, not high flow, fluid acrylic because it's highly pigmented and it's already fluid. So that means I have to use less airbrush medium to my mixture. Now, if you choose to use a just, let's just say a regular paint, uh, a medium body paint or something like that, and um, I'll just put this out here. Um, this medium body paint is thicker than the high flow paint. You can see how thin this is versus this. This has got some peaks and some valleys and that kind of thing. Um, you can use both for sure. You just need to, if you have a heavier paint, you just need to add a little bit more airbrush medium to your mixture. So typically what I do is I will fill up my paint. I'll do it in quarters. So I'll fill up my paint in a quarter um, of the bottle or maybe even less depending on what you might be using it for. But this will this mixture will stay forever. Um, I haven't had one dry out yet and I've got two or I've got four of these in my studio and I make the mixture up very little once a year maybe. So I'll put my paint kind of um, at the bottom here, you know, fill it up, take the cap off, fill it up to about a quarter, and then I will add about this, about the same amount of airbrush medium. So whatever you fill your paint up with, fill your airbrush medium up the same. So 50-50 mixture basically. Then you'll shake it up, get it really shaken and mixed around and then try it out and see how it, if it's too thick, it's not coming out, then you need to just add a little bit more airbrush medium. If it's too thin and it's coming out all over the place, then add a little bit more paint. That's the science behind it. It's not, you know, a particular recipe that works every time. You just kind of have to mix it a little bit and see what you're doing. Um, the fluid acrylic, the um, because it's already highly pigmented, works really well, but so does every other paint that I've used in case I didn't have a fluid acrylic. Um, it's all worked well. You just have to mix in a little bit more airbrush medium if you have a thicker paint. Um, so this is the fine line applicator. Um, you can get it at any arts and crafts place online, Amazon, Jerry's Artorama, all those kinds of things, and it is super fun to scribble with, to make lines and that kind of thing. Um, I use this a lot. I go in spurts, you know, I think we all go in spurts where we use something a lot and then we don't use it for a little bit. So anyway, that is the, the mixture for the fine line applicator. Now I took the cap off and I can't get it back in again. All right, so let's move on to paints. Okay, so paints. There is a plethora of paints, but the question I get asked most often is, um, which paint should I use? Because um, I use so many and people want to use, you know, what I'm using. I have a ton of different paints. I get, that's my thing. Um, I experiment with a lot. I obviously have some favorites. Um, but I go in phases and that kind of thing. And so people are like asking for to start out to buy some paints, what should I buy? And I really want to say buy for your budget um, because that's the most important thing. The thing is, is that you create. Um, it's not a matter of having the best brands or all those kinds of things. Um, the, the idea is that you paint and so get what you can afford. But I, and I will tell you what I started with was just regular craft paint and it is fine. It is perfectly fine to use regular cat craft paint um, when you're starting. I don't use craft paints any longer because that's been my progression um, and there is a definite, um, I would say, difference in quality with a, with a craft paint. But in general, um, they're they're fine for especially for mixed media and what we're doing because we're mixing and thinning and all those kinds of things. But craft pa crafts craft paints can be somewhat thin and um, not very highly pigmented. It just depends. 
Um, I found that um, DecoArts Americana craft paints have worked really well for me. I, there are some colors that I continue to go back to no matter what I'm doing. Um, one of my favorite colors of theirs is the avocado green. Green's a hard color to get the right color. Um, avocado green is one of my favorites of theirs. But craft paint is somewhat thin and you can see how I'm spreading this out here and it, it goes pretty light. Um, it's, it's what I would call a medium body paint. Um, it's got a little bit of thickness to it. I'm going to pour this out here again. You can see it's got a little bit of thickness to it so it's kind of standing up. So that's what I would call a medium body paint, um, which medium body paints are excellent to stencil with. Um, also a medium body paint is the Liquitex soft bodies. Um, but again, these jump up in price. Let me see if I can get this open. I haven't used this one in a while. Oh, I just got turquoise everywhere. And you can see the consistency is very much the same. See, it's moving a little bit. Same with this one, moving a little bit. So these are what I consider soft body paints. They've got a little bit of oomph to them. They've got, they can create some peaks and valleys. Um, their medium body paints are excellent to stencil with. Also a medium body paint, I, I consider medium body paint are say Liquitex Basics. These, this is a generic brand from like Hobby Lobby or something like that. All fairly the same. You can see the thickness. This one's not, these two are not as runny as these two. So these are ones that are a little bit thicker. Like this. Same with, uh, let me see here. Where did I do? This is this is also a, what I consider a medium body paint. Um, they thin out fairly well. I'll we'll get a little mixture going here. Um, they can be somewhat opaque, not as transparent as say a fluid acrylic. So. Um, these are the these are the paints that I, I started with. That's all I had basically was craft paints. Um, and then I ventured into um, some other things. So fluid acrylic is very, very fluid. And I'm going to put this carbon black out here. And you can see right away how it drops down and spreads out. And then when I when I tilt my paper, you can see how fluid that is. It goes very, it, it really spreads out easily and you get a lot of um, spreadability. It, it can be somewhat transparent because it is fluid, because it is so thin. But the, um, the color is um, extremely pigmented so that because it is a fluid, when you thin it out, say with water or whatever, because that's what we do a lot, the, the pigment stays very strong. So let me let me just kind of take this out here a little bit. And, and so you can see, even though this is very fluid over here, it's still very, very dark. And so that's what I love about the fluid acrylics is that um, I can use this in my painting with, say, washes or glazing, and my color stays strong. When you start to dilute these over here to get them as fluid as, say, a fluid acrylic, your pigment is um, compromised a little bit because you're adding water to it. So when I, when I add some water to this, you can lose some color tenacity with it. And sometimes with the thicker paints, they, you know, they have a binder in them and that kind of thing, um, you can maybe get some clumps in it. It just depends on the type of paint. But you lose a little bit of um, depth in the color when you're thinning out some of your medium body paints. So fluid acrylics are a fun kind of medium range. How I will say this about fluid acrylics though. 
they're harder to stencil with because they're so fluid you get some seepage under your stencil. So when I'm stenciling um, I will take extra care if I'm using a fluid acrylic to be super light um, and um, not pounce so hard and um, otherwise I will choose a thicker paint to stencil with. Um, so th that's just a heads up for what type of paint you want to choose. Okay, let's stay on the thin paints. So acrylic paints, there's just so many varieties. So there are acrylic paints, I mean acrylic inks, and um, these are like your like your regular inks except they're acrylic, which I love these to do some fun to do drops with. To just do all kinds, of, I mean drips and different things like that. And you can see the difference here. And again, this is highly pigmented, so dilution of your color is not going to happen hardly at all with the acrylic inks. This is um, Dr. Martin's um, it's called liquid acrylic. It's basically the same. This is um, F&W or Daler and Rowney's acrylic inks. Basically all the same type of thing. You can see how wonderful. But see that color and how beautiful it is? Oh! So um, every everything has, a, has its certain application. I will maybe be painting with all of these paints over here and then want some drips and we'll grab an acrylic ink or an, an acrylic high flow which is this. This is golden and I know there's a lot of companies coming out with um, say called liquid paints or different things like that which is awesome because for the longest time golden was really the only one that kind of had that option. And so you... Oh, quinacridone magenta is one of my favorite colors. So, or quinacridone, however you say it. But these are so much fun to work with and use for drips and different splatters and things like that because they they just water down so easily. You can see how how fun that can be. So those that's um, high flow and acrylic inks, and all of these are acrylic acrylic products. I'm not talking any water soluble or watercolors or anything like that. This is all acrylic paints. Because I work with mainly acrylic paints because of all the layering I do and I want my layers to stay put so I work with acrylics. Um, okay so we've got craft paints, medium body paints, um, fluids, high flow, and then there's just so many different brands like this is Soho brand which is a fun brand oh, this one's not even open <laughs> but it's the same as media as, as say a Liquitex basic or that kind of thing which is I consider like a medium body then we go into the heavy body paints um, Arteza is also considered in my opinion like a craft paint or a medium body paint um, so Again, it's hard to know, and I'm going to give you my opinion as where you should start after I do all of this. So then we've got heavy body paints. So Liquitex has a heavy body paint. Golden is known for their heavy body paints. Windsor & Newton has some. Um, it's just, it's sometimes mind-boggling all the options. But these are super opaque. So you... Um, when you're painting with them. I'm just going to kind of put them out. Oh, that's white. That's not going to help you see anything. Um, so these don't move at all. They're super thick. And when you paint with them, let me grab my brush here. Um, they leave, it leaves peaks and valleys. I mean, it's almost hard to get it off my brush even. So when I'm making a brush stroke, I am leaving layers of this. And you can see just by it coming off my brush how it's peaking. So um, let me go over here. This is, again, 
This is the Liquitex Heavy Body. Um, all that peaks and valleys, you have to work really hard to get a nice smooth brush stroke with the heavy body. I, I don't use heavy bodies very often and I tell you most of the time when I am using heavy body it's because I like the color or and you can just see how how thick that is. It's just every time I pick up my brush it leaves this little mountain of yummy color goodness. Uh, you, most of the time I'm using a heavy body because I, ha I want that texture or I have a very highly textured area that I'm going over that I want to add to or maybe I use it as a stencil or most of the time I like the color and I'm going to water it down. But what happens is as I water it down because it is so thick and to get it to the consistency that I want it I lose some color. And so um, there are, and every, so that's a heavy body. Now each paint kind of has its own um, finish as well. Most of these will dry to kind of a satin um, finish. A lot of the craft paints will go matte. You can see here this is relatively matte now. Um, the heavy bodies, it just depends. You have to kind of check them out, but a lot of times they're a little bit more shiny. There are matte acrylics out on the market. I know there's a ton right now. Um, I think Seth ha After has some like fresco paints and different things like that. I, you guys, I'm terrible at closing my cap. So um, yeah, it's just, it's just the way it is around here. <clears throat> Um, these are, this is a Blick matte acrylic. There's all kinds that are super matte or like a chalk finish almost. But again, this is really soft and movable, but this will dry to a really matte finish, which is, uh, which is really fun for certain projects. Um, but a lot of times I'm mixing gesso in with my paints, if you've watched any of my videos, um, which kind of brings things to a matte finish already. So let me see if I can get this dry so you can see the difference in the finish of the paints. Okay, so I've dried these for the most part, except for like the big blobs. Those are still wet, obviously. But you can see how um, some of these have a shinier finish. The um, heavy body um, takes a lot longer to dry, but you can see kind of that shiny finish. This is the matte, which is super matte, super matte finish. You don't have any shine whatsoever. And these are all the other paints that I use that have somewhat of a shine, but not too terribly bad. When you water something out with a, some water, it gets very matte. Um, so every paint kind of has, has a different finish. These are the acrylics. And they have a little bit of a shine. The um, inks and the high flow have a little bit of a shine to it. Um, so it's really kind of your preference. Um, I don't pay attention too much to that. I don't want a super shiny finish, but most of the time I'm using matte medium in everything that I do that kind of dulls everything down anyway. And uh, the other reason I don't use a lot of heavy body paints is because the dry time. Um, I'm I quick I create fast. I'm I'm, I'm just in the mo in the mood, and I'm creating. I want to dry fast, move on, and finish my project. So, um, the other thing I want to tell you about all of this is I am creating on a um, mixed media paper that has been gessoed, and your surface makes a big difference on how your paint performs. And so while I was able to move all of this around very easily and smoosh it around and all that kind of thing, it's because I'm on a non-porous surface. And most everything that I create on is on a non-porous surface. I would say 99.9% .9 of the time I'm creating on a non-porous surface because I've put paper down or I've gessoed or something like that. So I want to show you the difference between 
a non gessoed surface so this is just a regular piece of paper and what happens is you are not able to move your paint around because it immediately soaks into the paper so let's just this is a great example with the acrylics because they're so movable I want you to see the difference so on my other page I kind of drop these down and then I I let them drip and it doesn't drip as far and move around so if I want to move this around I can't move it around as much because immediately it's drying into my my uh, porous surface so let's grab a, um, this is a fluid fluid acrylic I'm going to move this around and if I grab some water let's just put some water on my brush Got a little bit of pink in there. Um, my spreadability diminishes right away because it's soaking into the paper. And if I want to come back and wipe this up, I can't because it's soaked into the paper. So you, you're limited when you're working on a porous surface. So that's going to make your, your um, paints perform differently than mine if you're trying to do the same thing that I'm doing on a porous surface. Um, surface. So porous is where it hasn't been primed um, like a regular piece of paper, a regular piece of mixed media paper or um, vintage paper, anything like that. Um, I will prime my surface with either gesso or matte medium. You could use clear gesso if you wanted to do that so that you've, you can see what's underneath. Um, but matte medium works the same and I, I'm a firm believer in not ha having to have a lot of products to create with. So I wanted to put, make sure you understood that. So let me bring this back here. So to recap, um, we tried a lot of different paints. Um, oh, and I want to say this too. So I use a lot lately. I've been using Lucas. That's my newest um, obsession <clears throat> um, and I, I kind of change and I see a new shiny object and I go Ooh, let's try that but I'm enjoying the Lucas paints Lucas has two different versions this is the Lucas Krill which is like a medium body paint and then Lucas has the Lucas Krill liquid which is like a fluid acrylic so to kind of sum all of this up what I want you to know is don't feel like you have, if you don't have a ton of paints, find your, your favorite colors that you love. I obviously have colors that I go to, like quinacridone magenta by far is a staple, teal, blacks, whites, those kinds of things. Find the colors that you love in the paints that you can afford. If it's if all it is is craft paint, that will work because with mixed media, we're watering down, we're doing all kinds of things, we're smushing. Um, use your craft paints. If you want to step it up a little bit um, without having to spend a lot of money, I would suggest maybe going to maybe a Liquitex um, Basics because it's again, it's a little bit thicker. It's a bit, little bit better quality, and um, it's easy to stencil with, and there's the color variety, you have a good color variety. After that, it's really up to you to kind of experiment, and I would suggest if you want to say, hey, I want to try some fluid acrylics, or I want to try some inks, or acrylic inks, or high flows, or whatever it is, I would suggest, again, buying just one or two bottles of your favorite colors and trying them out and then I will for the longest time I would just buy a single bottle a month of the next thing that I wanted to try just so that I could introduce it into my art and then you can decide if you love it or hate it um, because often you know we can say oh I want that new shiny thing and then um, it doesn't really work for our style or for what we're doing so um, experiment a little bit buy one bottle and try it and see but again the most important thing is that you create and you create with what you have within your budget um, so if that's craft paint amen if you want to step it up try your medium body paints and there's a lot of different ones out there in dip like so liquitex basics and then this is the studio 71 which is kind of a you know 
probably about the same. Same. This is Amsterdam. Lucas has the same thing. They're kind of all the same, but look at what is works for your budget and then buy the colors that you love and then add a new color every so often so that you can then kind of increase your color range. Don't be afraid to mix colors to get the colors that you need until you can afford to get the colors that you want. So then if you want to experiment, go with a fluid acrylic. These are wonderful. I love using them and smushing and glazing and all those kinds of things. But again, and I will say this, Deco Arts fluid acrylics for the money are phenomenal. Um, these are the uh, Krills, Lucas Krills. They're a little bit more expensive. Um, but of course I've got a huge bottle and I love the way that it is you can pour it and that kind of thing for the money deco art is by far one of the best reasonable fluid acrylics um, that you can get in comparison so like golden has fluid acrylics and they're outrageous I just was gonna buy some uh, magenta and I was like dang I think maybe I, I'll wait just a few minutes before I get that. Um, so then you can experiment with acrylic inks and different things like that. You can experiment with the mattes um, or the, I would say soft, the Liquitex soft body. If you have it, use it. But I would say if you're, I wouldn't invest in the soft body. I would just either use a craft paint or one of these. I have a couple of these and after I use them, I was like, ah, you know, it's about the same as either one of these. Um, so then you can also experiment with some of the mattes, matte acrylics if you want. But for me, I, the matte acrylic is nice if I want that real ch kind of chalky finish. But I'm using adding, I'm usually adding gesso to my paint anyway and putting matte medium over stuff so I get that kind of matte finish already. I, that was a lot of information. I hope it was helpful. I hope it will help you um, not be fearful of choosing paints and just trying to experiment. Don't feel like you have to buy the whole range of colors. Buy your favorite colors. Use those and then buy one additional whatever it is you want to try and experiment with that so and see if if you like it and then you can then you can purchase more. But again, the most important thing is that you create. All right, loves. Um, thank you so much for joining me in the question and answer um, series. And I will have a list of the things that I talked about today, the towels and different types of paints and the um, airbrush medium. I'll have links to all of those down below in the YouTube description box. And I hope during this time that you are all staying safe and staying home and taking care of yourselves as we get through this um, world pandemic uh, um, that we're going through right now. Um, know that I am thinking of you and I love you guys and I'm trying to put out as much content as I possibly can for you to give you some distraction from all of the other things that are going on. All right, loves, have a wonderful day and I will talk to you soon.